one coming in from him. Yeah, so Beaver. we have Beaver in blue versus Pirameki in red at the top of the screen. What is going to happen here? There's the skeleton spawned at the back. Mega Minion at the front for Pirameki. Okay, we're looking at this, yeah. Just throwing out a log for cycling. Of that skeleton was probably someone for that same reason. Looking down at Royal Ghost here. See how he does here. I think I'll be ignored. There's a Hog Rider for Beaver. That's why he banned the tornado, making sure that Hog Rider doesn't get pulled into the tower. Great choice of a bank card, but is the Hog Rider going to be effective? We currently have a Pekka on way to the tower. There's a Hunter. Very interesting counter with the poison used by Pirameki. Miner coming out. That's going to take out the Hunter. Oh, good. Good play there. Perfect Ice Golem just in time to make sure that the Pekka didn't take out that Hunter. Trying to lure it away. That one hit coming from the P.E.K.K.A. could do damage. I really see how that game will come into play. If that one hit had connected from Pirameki, means that we're still going to be left with relative full HPs of all the towers here so far. Yeah, there's, there's the bandit. The bandit is going to just dive through, I guess. There we go. Skeletons to make sure that the dash doesn't come through. And the, the Royal Golems are just going to pass each other like ships in the night. There you go. And we're still looking at the Electro Wizard with the log, just trying to finish him off. The Hunter's there. It's going to be noticed right by that Royal Ghost. You see that pellet all connected to that one Royal Ghost. It's going to do a lot more damage than you see it more spread apart. Yeah. Hunter is a great defensive unit because anything that gets close instantly dies pretty yeah. much. But when it goes on the offense, it needs to get a bit too close to the tower to be dealing damage. And sure. that really does detract from the power of the unit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree, and it's about the pellets all connecting to one single unit is what you want here. You see the bandit trying to make sure it can get to the tower a little bit quicker, but having a hard time now, and you see the hunter having days here. Uh, just trying to knock off the damage from range. Looking at the nine musketeers now for Beaver. That was his go-to play here. Now, banning out the tornado was another reason for that, and it's going to be countered here uh, by the Pekka. See how that works. Playing three Musketeers without an Elixir Collector, this, that's kind of greedy. It's going to be very hard to put them down. Put them down oh, look at the left side, times. though. The left but one. Damn, the Musketeer is still doing a lot of free damage. The Bandit gets there quickly, though, to knock it down. But 626 down for Pyramiki. Can you recover from this? Because that three Musketeers, of course, uh, was countered well on the right side by the Pekka, but on the left side, it did a lot more damage than what Pyramiki initially wanted. Yeah, Hunter right there in. cleaning up that push it looked really dangerous there was so much health on those units coming into beaver's side and just the hunter perfect positioning managed to clean everything up oh look at that lure away coming in for the ice golem and trying to just see what they can do here hog rider just one more hit all to do it and even just the fireball trying to finish him up but one hit from the hog rider would have done it and beaver gets that done in going to see a win now coming over to Sandbox. So, kind of a backward yeah. story. Sandbox in a very long time, I believe. I think they've won a few sets in the last few weeks, but they've never managed to close out a game. Right. Um, but Sandbox have been okay at 2v2, and Detonation Gaming's 2v2 has been suspect at best. Right. It means that if Sandbox can get this over to a 2v2 where they're on the upper end of things, might feel very happy about their chances to possibly grab their first match win. Uh, the series here. You can see Beaver, as soon as that hunter came down, he, he nods, he's like, yep, that's okay. I'm, I'm not worried about what he's playing so far. So the Ice Golem will be taken care of quite easily there. The Hog Rider so is kind of replicating a Beaver's deck from last game, and now Beaver replicating here, making sick a little bit as we see the Pekka being summoned here. So it's a kind of a mirror match on the opposite end now. Yeah, but we do get, it kind of is just copying the deck with the three Musketeers yeah. there as well. That's going to clean up that Pekka, but he might oh. get... Oh, using his own trick against your opponent as the Ice Golem very nicely summoned there. Still. Yeah. Now the question is, what does Beaver have to defend against those uh, Musketeers? Just throw out the bandits, a lot comes down taking out the golems. He does have a very, very light deck here. Logs, arrows, zaps kill most of the units in this deck that we've seen so far. Very minimal win for Pyramiki. 
literally just copying his the deck uh, from Beaver from game one. Trying to get that done on this play. See the Miner and the Goblin Gang just trying to come up here to do some damage. And you can see the Royal Girls putting his aggros back down onto the Miner there. Operator and a Pekka. Good, good counter there, but the Royal Ghost might actually connect. They should throw down, yeah, Bats. I, Bats is a good choice. If you throw down the Goblins, the area of effect from the Royal Ghost will just wipe them out instantly. Oh, look at that Ice Golem once again, expertly used. To make sure the Pekka deck gets nowhere on the use of the tower. And while the two of the Musketeers are going to be dealing damage to the rest of the Pekka here. Yeah, that's really bad for Beaver. He really wanted that Pekka to at least engage the two. Musketeers. Oh, look at that hog so rider rush on, that side. on the right. Can he get that first tower? It's going to be the important one here. And he's going to get a few hits. And wonder if he can get any more here. Very nice defense done by Beaver, though. Kind of limiting that to a minimum. Yeah, but he doesn't seem he has anything on the attack again. The Hunter uh -huh. just cleans up the Pekka, cleans up the Ice Golem. Oh, that's a balloon. The that's a bit from Beaver. This is going to be the last hidden card uh, coming from Beaver. And something that wasn't expected by Pyramid. Can he take care of this? One drop will be coming in, a second drop Ooh, doesn't so come good. in. The Miner's still attacking that flank at 98 HP on the right side. I mean, another Miner being done, he doesn't have anything else. One more will be there, there 42, is. and the last hit coming from the Miner. Beaver gets that 1v1 victory. So now he literally had his own deck played against him in game two, but he was still a Destination Gaming. See the Japanese side on top, uh, the Korean side Sandbox. The blue side at the bottom. Yeah, what's interesting, I oh. keep saying this every time he comes out, but Lewis, I think, has only been playing for eight months. Okay. Compared to everyone else who's been playing for two years. It's it's kind of a Cinderella story, you know? He's come out of nowhere, suddenly he's playing on the biggest stage in Clash Royale. Are you looking at this, uh, how he summoned the Golem and the Dark Prince combo? Usually that is supposed to go right behind the Golem, but how he tracked that away? Oh, it's due to uh, the Miner. Kind of pulling it away, away from the Golem, and now Golem's going to be rather weak uh, when it comes to the rush that initially was prepared with the Dark Prince. Yeah, you never want the Golem to be on his own at the tower because he doesn't do that much damage, especially when there is so much being used on defense here. You uh -huh. see the Prince is actually going to take out that giant skeleton. Yeah, that's fine. Far, far away from the tower. And the Golem, again, at the top, just not connecting at all there. I think maybe one death explosion managed to connect. Okay, so how can this next giant skeleton make it up? And still looking at this, this left one here, it might just reach oh, the tower and it already connects. did it. That might be the diff this explosion of the first tower that could do about 1100, uh, close to 1000 uh, HP on that one. And you just never want to make that giant skeleton reach your ta opponent's tower. Yeah, you always want to make sure that that giant skeleton dies somewhere near the bridge because if that bone goes off on your tower, it is going to die just like this. The miner dealing a lot of damage there. And what they've done is they've, they've decided, okay, we've got to sacrifice that tower. We just need to put everything on this offense here. They're going to build up Elixir. They're going to put a lot behind this. We're going to probably see. Or maybe not. Maybe they're not giving up. They're using that Double other golem, golem as a bait. Double golem here and trying to get that prince to work against it in. Give a little bit of speed, but it's really all about uh, this two oh, golems. To face the King Tower with that tornado. Makes it a lot tougher uh, when you're talking but about the golem the trying to make the rush here, there. but golem is still alive here, really having done and that's very it. little to get that golem out of there. And we're still looking at the explosion coming through. Two giant skeletons on the left side. Really would not matter that much unless they're going for the King's Tower right away, but for the time being, Miner's gonna get that done, job done, and now the two skeletons here just trying to reach as close to the King's Tower as they can. First one is not gonna reach, the second one is not gonna reach as well, so really good defense coming in uh, for Sandbox. Has to do it again now against the third giant skeleton coming in. Very interesting placement of those Mega Minions behind the tower. They fly straight down the middle. They didn't contribute anything to the defense. I'm not sure if that was intended at all. Now we're looking at a sudden death here. Could go both ways here as we do. Still look at Sandbox. Seemingly strong, but has a hard time against these golems here. Now it's going to be raised up by the destruction of that Lumberjack. Down to 1820 though. Really dependent on Detonation Gaming just to get the skeleton onto the other side. That is the goal here, but 
Unless they cannot get that done, I see eventually the Golden Push being too much of a, of a handle uh, for Destination Gaming to deal with. Yeah, I think what we're going to see now is this Golem push up, and then once it gets over the bridge, we might see another Golem put in the pocket. Just making sure, there we go, it's in the pocket. Yeah. Making sure that there's just an absolutely massive amount of HP there. We're still looking at this, the Lumberjack now coming in, just trying to make sure this play, the Tornado being used left and right, just to make sure the Golems do not touch on their towers here, but still looking at... One explosion move forward. For this one here, but the giant skills are now being summoned on both angles here. Just needs it to get to the tower. That one's really close, actually. So, can we get another giant skeleton on there? Could be. Waiting for Detonation Gaming, but I think one just might connect. Oh, well, it was just barely just far off. Just out of the way. It was looking very hairy there for Sandbox. Wasn't sure if they were going to be able to defend that. There was so much there, and they just managed to pull it off. Another Golem at the bridge, Golem at the pocket. Will these be able to connect? Great Tornado bringing yeah. those Golems away from the tower. We're going to see another one come down now. Keeping them inside that poison. And Sandbox are using the poison offensively now to make sure that that tower does take damage. And the Golem gets one hit. That could be the deciding difference between these two teams. Just double Prince play down at the back. 702 here. Now down to 653 for Destination Gaming. Sandbox just needs a little more effort. To have one more minute of overtime to get that job done, and I'm still looking at this explosion from the giant skeleton, still doing a lot well uh, against the defense efforts being put in by Sandbox. But how far can they get this going? Another uh, golem into the pocket there, as you say. 653 with two golems looking relatively healthy. Can the two tornadoes get the job done? But used at the same time, so I just have to assume that was a little mistake it's coming it's over. in for Detonation Gaming. It could just use that in a row consecutively without using it all at once because that timer does not multiply by using it at the same time means Detonation Gaming finding it once again Ido difficult and could potentially give their side Sandbox a Korean team not a Japanese team record a W in this regional clash so we see a Golem come down for Sandbox in the blue and we see a Golem Pekka come out for Detonation Gaming in the red at the top so making it easy now the Japanese side to get an easy counter onto the Golem. A lot easier when you're trying to make sure you get that single damage done onto the rock there. Fortunately, the Inferno Dragon targeted the guards. Not what you wanted. You want that to connect to the Golem. You want that to connect to the Pekka. There is also an Electro Wizard there making sure the Inferno Dragon doesn't get any damage off. This push is looking yeah. very, very scary here. The Inferno Dragon having a hard time to work its defensive tools against Detonation Gaming and Sandbox might just suffer their first tower already with one swipe coming from the Peke. Immediate destruction of the first tower already here in this early game. Yeah, such a strong push. It just stopped everything in its tracks. Anything they threw out, yeah. Look this at is, that. This is insane. Barely a minute has passed, and that tower is looking very, very unhealthy. And he's still going for the left side here, Sandbox, and Ido and Shinchu. I'm going to just say thank you for that, just because they really want all three crowns here. Couldn't even get that before overtime, and that would be very crazy. Sure, this time around, Ido and Shinchu want to make sure their Infernal Dragons are all fully effective, not interrupted by their Electro Wizard. Yeah, Sandbox need to go down that left-hand side. Purely for the fact that if they don't and there's a counter-attack, they're not going to have enough to defend. The Golem is such an expensive unit, and if they they have to use it as a, as a meat body. They have to use oh. it as a meat shield on that left-hand side. Look at that Electro Wizard doing work once again for Detonation Gaming. Do they have something for it? Is even a graveyard being summoned? That's going to pull away the Prince from the Pekka. The Pekka's just going to one-shot it. Oh, He's going to head to the tower. There as well, so 1,035. Born here, Pekka does go doesn't down. get damaged, but Electro Wizard barely summoned there to make sure the Infernal Dragon for Detonation Gaming does minimal damage. Yeah, this Golem is going to have a very hard time getting up to that tower in time. It takes roughly 40 seconds to go from the back to the front, and if anything stands in its way, if anything blocks it, it's going to be that. It's going to be game over. I don't think there's enough time here for these Golems to make it. Second Golem here, though. Double Golem is going to be all or nothing here. For Sandbox, if they don't get the job done here, we might likely see a King's Tower. As we do see five seconds left here. 
It's all about that 13-19. Can they get it down? And it seems like Detonation Gaming has gotten this one. Game two going in their books here. And very nicely done to recover back uh, from a lack of wins they have suffered in the past a couple of minutes. I feel if they didn't use their timeout between game one and two, they would have had a very good chance of taking game two. I feel like that might have slowed down the momentum and just given Detonation Gaming a chance to bring themselves back up. But at the same time, I understand uh, the mentality of Sandbox when they do call that time in, just for the reason that they want to be extra careful to make sure they get the win in the cleanest manner possible. But maybe those nerves really? are, are going to cost them here. We do see the Dark Goblin, a, a kind of staple in the Japanese region. We've seen a lot of Dark Goblin around in the professional games. You see it a lot on ladder as well recently, but seeing it here in the Japanese region is uh, not a surprise at all. Golem does connect, doesn't get to do much damage, so that P.E.K.K.A. is very, very healthy. Wow, so that Electro Wizard doing a lot of work, knocking down the Golem, the Prince, and even the P.E.K.K.A. Uh, all single-handedly. Very much a maximum effort there. Yeah, using the Prince there to make sure that the P.E.K.K.A. turned around was a very, very good play. The Infernal Dragon does connect, but it's not going to deal that much damage. In comes the Prince charging. It's going to connect with that Electro Wizard, but not with the charge. Okay, so it, even one damage does connect uh, for that Electro Wizard, but the Dark Goblin still doing a lot of damage here. Trying to see what they can do. Really even across both sides. No significant damage done quite yet. Kind of unlike the game two that we had where earlier where Detonation Gaming literally destroyed the tower in just one push. Yeah, this this is looking good for Sandbox right now because they are slowly getting damage onto the tower while not taking any damage really on their own. There's so much being played there. There is a Lumberjack, there is the Inferno Dragon, there's a Dark Prince, Mega Minions on both sides. These are very, very similar decks. But again, Sandbox's Golems connect, Destination Gaming's doesn't. Okay, we're now looking at this. Prince just pushing out the P.E.K.K.A. Oh, with so many units now coming in. Detonation Gaming looking like a good push, but now he's Fireball to get all the units coming in. And that Golem is going to be able to tank out on the rest of the efforts there. So very nicely done. Across the situation that would could have been very, very dangerous for Sandbox. Yeah, that Fireball gains so much Elixir there for Sandbox. And once again, it looks like they're going to get to the tower. Just the explosion damage this time, but that's a lot more than Detonation Gaming have been achieving. Destination Gaming wasn't able to get out the chip damage that they really needed. So more so about Sandbox doing that opposite end. I thought that Lumberjack was just going to push in front of that Golem. There's two Golems being played now. Is that a bit too much? I think it might be. I think there might be too much Elixir being played down. Detonation Gaming see this weakness. They drop down their own graveyard. They drop down their own poison down there. And the Golems are going to connect this time. We're going to look at this two golems up top. Can they do enough damage to finish the game off? It's not going to be the answer. And Pekka still rushing in with the Prince. And do they have enough elixirs now to defend against this effort here? See the double Prince getting summoned as a defensive tool uh, for Sandbox. Trying to get guard out against the Pekka here. But slowly they're getting pushed out on their own turf. And be important to, to, for this Prince to get maximum effort there. Do they have enough elixir to defend it? Doesn't look like they do. That tower is so low. 194, and that's the last bit of effort. With the zap trying to do just a little bit more damage. That poison and the 138 will be a cinch uh, for Detonation Gaming as they pull this game right back on track. And a team that we thought was weaker on 2v2 gets the good win onto a very dangerous situation that was being thrown there by Sandbox. Sandbox made a That we've seen from the very first day. That's the scariness of the Japanese teams. They always are willing to improve and are not just satisfied being at the top. They want to get higher if they can. And really, that's a scary indication when you're talking about competition across multiple regions. And we could see that once again for the Destination Game. Uh, looking oh, look at this. Expo. Something we haven't seen for a while now. Maybe both players are going to be playing it. We don't usually see much of a Tesla unless an Expo is following up behind it. Now, Tesla, we know that's almost an incredible counter structure to an Expo. 
being two elixirs down, but still doing more damage than the Expo across the health here, means that Tesla probably wasn't expected by Lewis when he prepared the Expo deck. I'd be surprised if he wasn't expecting it because we have seen a lot of Teslas on defense. And the Tesla doesn't quite take out an Expo unless it's mixed with the Fireball that we saw earlier. Ah. And it is an Expo. Tell me, defensive Expo here is perfect as long as they can keep the Expos from facing off against each other. You know what that means, though? When we see the Tesla, we know kind of what to expect. We definitely did get. Tesla and the, uh, the Expo combo from Beaver. Yeah, this just might mean that Lewis might have his own Tesla's uh, open his pack as well. Yeah, what Beaver is playing right now is the very heavy, very quick cycle Expo deck that we've seen a lot on ladder. It's climbed very, very high in recent times. And it looks as though Lewis is playing something similar, but we don't see his last two cards. Okay, so is that Tesla going to be able to reach that Expo? Yes, it, it is, and that's going to be trouble. Uh, for Lewis and we just really want to get the expert to connect onto a tower. Hasn't really gotten a single a single arrow. You gotta talk about the going all the way to a tower hasn't happened for Lewis and mostly it's been about Beaver playing that defensively, but you can see that on the other end here. See the Tesla very successful in getting that expo down. So maximal potential gather that there, but you see the Tesla being waited here in the end. Expo, expo is just gonna be ready right now to get that. Rotation on and now starting to do some damage onto the tower here. Does connect with the fireball. We'll take a bit more of the log, we'll finish it off, but he did so much damage yeah. to that tower. 1688. Unfortunately, the Tesla being played on the wrong side really does hurt here. Okay, so we're still looking at the cycle here. The skeleton. Obviously trying to gather away as much damage as he can. The Tesla is gonna eventually go down and skeleton here. How can he long can he stand here and Still look at the quick rotation. Still very good defense coming in for Beaver. 1,500. There's a little more there. Yeah, Lewis is getting the better hand of these exchanges right now. But that Tesla will connect onto that crossbow. That does mean it will die. And then we should see Beaver drop his own expo on that right-hand side. You can see that happen very much bit. And see what that does. The expo does land on the left side for Beaver with a Tesla backup to make sure it has no defense opportunities. That Tesla very nicely playing. How long can it last? So that's the biggest problem here. The log trying to just chip down onto the Expo, but very nice fireball there as well from Lewis. So it's a matter of how long can your Expo stand and does the most damage uh, to your opponent tower? It's going to be the question we're going to be answering here. Yeah, we haven't seen Beaver's Expos connect whatsoever. And we've seen quite a few connections, but not amazing connections for Lewis. Okay, you see the Tesla now pulling that away, just to make sure the Expo does a little bit of damage, but the log finishing it off as with the same Tesla. Right now, it's going to be all or nothing for both of these players here, as we do see the Expo kind of be eventually targeting each other. Maybe, maybe not, because both players have such an incredibly quick cycle. I really don't think we're going to see, but Beaver's Expo connects to the tower. Okay. Evens out the score right now. Everything is even. 1435 to 1416. And still looking across the right and the left side. And that's the most important one here. Especially for Beaver. He wants to get that offensive strap out of there. But not having a hard time with the Tesla still chipping it down. See the log coming in. Make sure that it goes up to no use. And 1332. Yeah, Lewis is going to have another Expo on rotation very, very soon. But nothing being played there. Nothing okay. connects with that Expo. And it's doing so much damage. 800, 700, log. Anything you can do to finish him off. One hit from the Tesla. And now it's going to be down to 311. Now you can just imagine on the, the rotation of the Fireball might just be good enough to handle this out. Yeah, we can see that Beaver knows this. He is now defensive. playing those defensive Expos. Making sure that he doesn't take uh, too much damage. He can just wait it out. Another fireball will be enough. Could very well be. He does have a log to make sure that fireball the and the log does enough that damage onto that 110. You see the good game being called. There's no way now he's going to be able to win out that one. Lewis is going to go down and Beaver. Very nicely done for that ace match. Really close in the way that both players played the that Expo. Detonation Gaming needs. <laughs> <laughs> See the emoticons coming in. <laughs> Showing Lewis's 
Curiosity there. Looks like Lewis is going to be playing a very similar deck, and I think Beaver is going to be playing the same deck too. I just see an Expo versus Expo once again. Just rotating around the cards now, so they're ready to summon that out. But yeah, Knight for the very first time here. We're going to see Archers played behind it, and we're going to call it Rascals. <laughs> that There's part? a Hog Rider onto the Expo, and a, a Lightning as well. This is not the Expo deck. This is a very heavy counter Expo deck from Beaver. Okay. Does have the Lightning, which gets down the Expo to very low health. We can't do anything. Now, Lewis is thinking. He knows that the Expo deck is already uncovered for his opponent. Yeah, he's thinking what to save. He kind of needs to save a Tesla for the Hog Rider. And that's why we see the Tesla play down there with the Expo. But this gives Beaver a window of opportunity to go down that right-hand side and just not worry about that uh, Expo. There is so much help there. There's the Hog Rider knight. as well. The Knight takes up that that Ice Spirit. Hog Rider gets one hit, though. Oh, my goodness. And that's Lewis still now thinking in his head that Beaver isn't going to get the win by preparing an anti-Expo deck here. And Lewis, you see him making really large stretches across the back. Kind of thinking that he didn't expect this once again. He didn't expect another Expo deck on the opponent's end. In the first game, now game two. Seeing that the anti-Expo deck has come from the side of Beaver. Yeah, we see do trouble. see as well that Beaver's currently down a couple of Elixir compared to Lewis in terms of what's on the field, but this is all going to change now with that zap, making sure that Expo connects to the, the Ice Golem. And now he has an advantage. Beaver does have that one hidden card still yet to be revealed. It is going to be the Magic Arrow, so Expo is not going to be in play for this guy. And like I said, it really is about Making that Expo really unusable yeah. for Lewis. Unfortunately, it looks like the Magic Archer didn't quite get the angle he needed to deal a couple of hits onto that tower. Perfect Tesla wow. placement there. Perfect. You see that very much the, the collapse going down from Lewis and that Beaver knew exactly how to compensate for that Expo. Very much expected on the left side. Yeah, he knew exactly where it would be, and that does give a lot of advantage to Beaver. Another Lightning comes out, and the maybe one hit from the Hog Rider, 948 HP. But Beaver's H Beaver's towers are looking incredibly healthy right now. Let's see the Tesla would come down once again. For the time being, it's a Knight serving as a similar role as you would usually see uh, from an Ice Golem. Yeah, that just gives another body there for Beaver. Making sure that that Expo is not going to connect to the tower, but another Expo comes down from Lewis. And the Knight, once again, being used to soak up that damage. We're going to see another Golem as well, but there's a Hog Rider. He's okay. going to make sure that that Expo is not going to hit the tower. It's perfect zap. Will he get one more hit? There we yeah. go. Make sure that that Expo doesn't connect to the tower. 655 HP, he does have Lightning. His two Lightnings now will finish it. Now, what is the strategy here uh, for Lewis? Is he just going to accept the fact that he cannot destroy uh, Beaver's Tower? Oh, that he's just going to go for the, the overtime and go for the timeout here. And two minutes left. If he can stall this for two minutes, we will just be getting onto the next match, which will give Lewis a fresh new chance to get us up here. So it just seems like the mindset now is not about beating out Beaver, but he's trying to get the tie as much as he can. There's a hog rider. Does Lewis have anything to defend? He's out of Elixir. Okay. But he has nothing One hit, two him. hits. One hit, and the second hit will come through. Ooh, 127. One, two, seven. The lightning. The lightning we'll will come now. through, and that will be the end of things. In 139, he couldn't hold on. And Beaver for Sandbox, finally a win on the board for the Korean teams. And what a celebration for now the entire region. You can see that.